Hey, how you guys doing? Um, thanks for being on. I guess for both you, maybe Josh, you you could start first. Um, you know, it's a big opportunity. You're playing a Big 12 team on the road. They're ranked 16th on ABC. Just kind of how excited are you guys for this opportunity? Maybe you know, be a statement game and and really mm -hmm. put last year in the in the rearview mirror. Definitely. I mean, we have the opportunity to go make a statement on the national stage. Uh, we're 11 a.m. kickoff on ABC. I mean, the country's going to be watching, and we can see uh, really what we're made of this Saturday. Um, me personally, uh, I think it's a chance for us to go out and showcase our uh, talents and just show what uh, this season's going to be like. You know, I'm just ready to go out and play in a new environment. I guess uh, either of you guys want to answer this. Um, you know, Luke, Luke Haas is going to, I guess Dylan, for that matter, is when brother, they're both going back to their home state to play and pretty close to home. And obviously Luke missed a good part of last season. Just what, how excited do you, do, you, do you guys think he is for this opportunity? And uh, what, what are you expecting from him, you know, after his first big game, really since uh, A&M, I guess, he got knocked out of that really early. Yeah, I would say having the opportunity to go and play in your home state. Um, I was able to do that last year. It's definitely special. Uh, you get your whole family, your extended family to come watch you play. And um, it's something that I cherish and I know he will cherish this Saturday. Uh, I mean, like you said, he had a, a great season last year before it was cut short, unfortunately. But he's worked hard this offseason to ensure that he's going to have another great season this year. And so... I'm sure he's excited and ready to make a statement on Saturday and just play his heart out. Um, for me, uh, I just feel like uh, he come out. He come out every day with a chip on his shoulder, and uh, I feel like today he's gonna make a. Uh, I mean, not today, but when, uh, Saturday he's gonna make a statement. Jane, I'm guessing you've gone against Luke a fair amount in practice. Just, I, I know he lost some weight and added back some muscle. Just what 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 you see from him in camp, and how, how do you think he's maybe different and better than he was last year? Um, he definitely had uh, got stronger and faster. Um, just way way more physical than he was his first year, and I feel like that's gonna help him excel. Okay, th thanks, guys. I'll, I'll turn it back to the the big O. Trey, go ahead. Yeah, Jaden, uh, with a guy like Ollie Gordon, uh, you know, they've tried to you know, run the ball, run the ball, and then they'll hit you over the top. How difficult is that being a safety uh, to not get caught cheating up inside and and just being prepared for for them throwing deep like they do? Uh, you know, just being disciplined and playing, through, uh, playing uh, within the defense, uh, just having my eyes on my key. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Your thoughts on Gordon as a running back? Um, you know, a good back, uh, physical, big, uh, we just got to come ready and put a body on them. And Josh, your thoughts on the front seven for Oklahoma State, and um, they got a linebacker that's really active, and just your opinion on all, all those guys. Yeah, they're definitely an experienced core. I mean, you got number 30 and number four that are veteran players, and they're going to make plays. And, I mean, that's their job, and our job is to limit the amount of plays they can make, hopefully to zero. And it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a clash every play on Saturday. And so we're preparing right now, uh, getting in the playbook, watching film to ensure that we know our responsibilities, we know our assignments, and they're doing the same thing. And so it's just going to come down to Saturday who can perform. They've got a guy on their defensive line, Colin Clay. You may have heard some of the guys talk about him. He was at Arkansas back in 2019, same class as Eric Gregory. Your thoughts on him up front on the defensive tackle uh, spot? You'll probably be going against him some. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I mean uh... – I'm sure EG can touch on this later, but uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sure he has this game circled on his calendar since uh, he got to Oklahoma State. And so he's going to be ready. We have to make sure that we're ready for him. Thanks, fellas. Jackson. Uh, Jaden, what, uh, what was it like lining up next to TJ this weekend uh, or last Thursday, kind of his first? real meaningful, you know, start and game action. What did you see from him? Uh, everything that he's he shown in practice, uh, he showed it on the field uh, last Thursday. Um, you know, it's just excitement. Every time he's on the field, I, I can trust him. Uh, the defense can trust him. We know that he's going to do his job, and when the players can't comes to him, he's going to make that play. How have you seen him most uh, improve, you know, since the uh, start of spring and the fall and to where we are now? Um, just his his speed and his power is 
he got way faster, um, way stronger, and just his mindset towards the game has changed a lot. Josh, uh, you know, you were one of the – I think – I guess you're the only offensive lineman uh, that started Thursday that also started, you know, last year. Just how how much different of a vibe was it maybe this year compared to last year at War Memorial Stadium? And, uh, you know, how good did it feel to kind of put on that show with the, with the rest of the line? Yeah, I mean, uh, vibes were high. We are playing at night. Uh, I feel like playing at night this year totally changed my perception of War Memorial. Uh, I could see how they played big games there uh, however many years ago. And uh, I actually, I'm probably in the minority here, but I wish, uh, I wouldn't mind playing a big game there in the future. I mean, it was it was fun to be there at night uh, with the, in regards to the new offensive line and the new offensive line coach. I mean, uh, they went out there and handled business. Uh, we as a unit uh, definitely progressed from last year. Um, I think we all remember uh, how people were feeling after that game, what, what questions arose and, um, I think we had success, but ultimately that was last week, and uh, we're we're not playing. We're we're not going to play that game again. And so, we're focused totally on Oklahoma State in this Saturday, and to make another statement of who we are as an offensive line and our identity. Yeah. Any any added motivation like for you guys up front that this you know it's, it's the first big test for everyone. But I know with all the discussions about you know, you guys and the struggles last year that this, you know, means maybe a little bit more for the offensive line this week? No, I would say, um, I mean, you approach every game the same. If you get too involved in the in the stakes of one game, uh, you're going to alter your routine and ultimately you're not going to perform as well because you altered your routine. And so you you approach every game as it as if it was the biggest game of your career. And so we did that last week and we're going to do it again this week and we're going to do it next week. Thanks, guys. Daniel, how did the offense look in the two minutes for the first time, and how was the communication maybe on that drive specifically, and having that count for real for the first time? Uh, would you mind repeating the first part of your question or your question as a whole? Yeah, just just the the two minute drive right before halftime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, how did the communication go? You. Uh, before the drive, we wanted to work on our two minute uh, protocol. And so we were communicating uh, down in distance, how much time was left, we needed to get to the ball, snap it, uh, whether the clock was stopped or rolling, if we were gonna huddle or not. Um, we had to communicate the IDs. And then of course, as you saw, I mean, Talon's gonna make plays. So if we hold up in protection and give him time, he's going to advance the ball, whether with, its, with his arm or with his feet. And I mean, I think his play speaks for himself. Thanks. Go ahead, John. Yeah, hey, Jaden. Um, you guys won at BYU a couple of years ago. It was a big, you know, marquee type game. But Arkansas has a history. They won at TCU in the first game of a two game series, and Texas Tech before that, they won the road game. I wonder if you could take me inside the mentality that you guys took into the game in Provo and just like knowing that there would be a bunch of eyes on the game and what it took to win that game. Um, you know, just like, uh, Brian was talking. We just approach every game as is, uh, as it's the first one. Um, as we approach the first one, so we're not looking at this game no different than we looked at the first one. We're just gonna come out, do our job, and prepare the same way we've been preparing. But but the mindset you had to go into BYU, the way y'all played that day, can you remember like what it felt like that, you know, you hushed the home crowd, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, you might have to say that question for EG. I didn't make it to that game. I was hurt. So I, I couldn't really tell you. <laughs> Jaden, I'm sorry. I, I, that, that slipped my mind. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll add that um, we're approaching this week as a business trip. We're going there to handle business, and uh, that's our approach, and that's our mindset. All right. And then the hel helmet communications. Did you hear Taylor's response to, like, how things were going with Coach Petrino and how smooth that went? Uh, I didn't I didn't hear Taylor, but I can hear Coach Petrino during practice. So, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, – it's going to be a benefit to us, and um, I won't overstep my bounds. I'm not too uh, comfortable with the communication. I don't really know what all the ins and outs, but I'm sure it'll be a benefit to us. Yeah, Jaden, how did it work for you? I mean, were you able to hear all the calls clearly and all that? Oh uh, yes, I was. Uh, it worked great. Um, just how we were uh, use it in practice, we use it like that in the game, and it it just went great. Are you mic'd up? Yeah, but I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, so cool. So, so who was the green dot after you came out? Who who got it next? Uh, Stephen Dix. Okay. Thanks, guys.
Ethan, that's why you hop on here. Go ahead. Yeah, for both of you, just being seniors this year, I know it's a big game this week. How are you maybe uh, taking it in a little bit more than maybe you did, you know, the start of your career, just kind of this last go around? Um, you know, uh, this will be my first time playing them and my last. So uh, I'm trying to go in as a team. We're we're trying to go in and just get it done and start fast and have a big dub and have fun out there on the way back. Yeah, I'll say uh... – Earlier in your career, you always uh, – let's say you have a big game and it doesn't quite go your way. The mindset after that is always, oh, next year we'll get them, next year we'll do this, next year we'll do that. I mean, sitting here as a senior, there is no next year. And so I have one – this is my – like he said, my only time playing Oklahoma State. It's my first and last. And so I have to handle business this weekend. I don't get another shot at it. Thanks. All right, Bob, wrap this one up. Hey, um, a lot of newcomers on the team, but you guys are, are a couple of, of holdovers, returners, whatever you, you say these days. And last year, you know, you guys had so many close games, one in five, I think, in games decided by one score. This one probably is going to be close, first of probably many close games. How do you feel like you guys are ready to flip that script and win the close games and then turn turn that record around? Josh? I think um, to your attention to detail, um, I mean, when it comes when you're in a one score game, uh, you're talking about two, three, maybe four plays that if they go a different way, you win. And um, I think if you look at last year, that's a good example of that. In each of those one score games, if we had three plays go our way, it's a whole different season. It's a whole different uh, result. And so succeeding in those two or three plays that decide the game comes down to your attention to detail. And we've worked on that all off season. We've worked at that through camp and in practice this week. Um, I say the same thing and also consistency come with that. Um, we got, you got to be consistent. Um, everything we doing in the first half, you got to be able to do it in the second half at a high level. And um, I feel like that's something that we've been working on. And um, I feel like we'll get that done this year. Yeah. When you're talking about a four hour game, uh, it's hard to stay focused mentally. And so you have to have the mental toughness to be locked in and engaged all 60 minutes of game time. And I think that's what ultimately separates teams in a close game like that. You think you guys are ready to, to do that or, or more ready than last year, maybe? Uh, I'm confident in my team. Um, I don't think I know we're ready. I say, well, I know as a home team, you like those night games. As a road team, I'd imagine you like those 11 a.m. games where the other – Fans don't have all day to get tanked up and everything. Um, do you feel like that's a big advantage that it's, a, it's an 11 a.m. game and it's early in the year and last year, you know, South Alabama went in there and knocked them off and, and Cuddy was on that team. I think he had a pick six. And um, and also you guys have had a couple extra days. Uh, to me, that all plays in your all's favor. I, I was wondering how you all felt about, about those factors. Um, I'll just say we approach every game the same, whether it's a morning kick or a night kick. Uh, me personally, I love noon games. I feel like that's uh, college football at its finest. I think the big games should be played at noon. Same for me. Okay, I, I'm right there with you. I love those early games. And and, and I just had one more for, for Jade. And, you know, we, we talked to Cuddy a little bit in the preseason, but he's gone over there and he, be, you know, the South Alabama put on those guys pretty good. Um what what is what have you maybe gleaned from him about playing over there in Stillwater since he I guess he's the only guy on the team that's done it I think and uh, you know does that make you feel good that the Cuddy one of his teams already gone over there and knocked him off? Um, I say it doesn't make me feel any different. Uh, we don't really talk talk about it too much because um, it's it's a new game, so we just got to come in there with the mindset to win. Okay, I'm good. And Josh, I, I think you're probably ready to run for for Mayor Little Rock. No. I don't know about all that. Great final one. Uh, I was just getting ready for the next group. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Y'all have a great day.